Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. Let's take a look at what happened as far as the global market is concerned and the rip roll rallying as far as the U.S. markets are concerned. Two and a half to three percent upside on the U.S. market. Europe was subdued at this point of time because uh, the move came in in the latter half of trade, while Asia today is doing well. Uh, Nikkei no doubt has come off the highs of the day, but that's uh, not being reflected on the SX Nifty, which continues to soar higher. It's up almost 100 points, which means that we will open close to the 10,800 mark in trade today. How did the ADRs pan out trade in trade? Trade Infosys was up 6%, but nevertheless, except for Tata Motors, all the other ADRs did manage to close in the green. So, positive cues coming in. Now, what was interesting yesterday was the Nifty rally. It was up almost 40 points, but look at the selling that happened on the mid cap and the small cap end of the market. So, it was only because of a few, few selected heavyweights on the Nifty that the market managed to move up. As far as the Nifty and the Bank Nifty is concerned, also uh, muted moves coming in. So, it was basically uh, four or five stocks on the Nifty that helped uh, the Nifty move. Uh, media index was up because of the strong buying that happened in ZN entertainment while the counter that they did manage to fall was the metal index again commodities across the globe uh, yesterday were down in trade but uh, overnight they managed to rebound so it'll be interesting to see how the metal pack pan out in trade FIs have been heavy buyers di sold in almost 330 crores in the cash market now if you're looking at what happened with the nifty again you can see the four select names uh, they were the one that actually had the nifty apart from it uh, the low weightage uh, uh, names on the nifty couldn't do much yes bank was down almost 10 percent in trade uh, lnt itc and bharti etl were the other drags on the index as far as crude is concerned, you can see that crude is up almost 1% in trade today, but still managing to stay below the $60 barrel per market trade. But remember, crude corrected 2.5% in overnight trade. Uh, the scene seems to be uh, much better for metals at this point of time. If you're looking at what's happening as far as the global metal space is concerned, uh, across the board on the LME, except for tin, there was buying that was seen. Uh, even in China, if you see the uh, four uh, columns on, 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 the, on, on the downside of the screen, again, uh, there is positive traction that's coming in on the base metal side. Uh, on the FNO side, uh, today's expiry, so rollovers are on, on the decent side. Uh, yesterday, we saw the Nifty managed to rally. The Bank Nifty was flat and it had rollovers as uh, high as 40%, uh, but still in line with what we had seen. Now, if you're looking at uh, some of uh, the open interest buildup where we are seeing it, uh, yesterday call writers are active from levels of 10,700 to high levels, put writers from 10,700 to lower levels. What hap will happen today because of the big move on the SX Nifty? Uh, call writers, uh, put writers will become active at 10,800 and call writers at 10,700 and 800 will be forced to share positions in open interest. And that was something similar that happened in trade yesterday also. If you saw what happened in yesterday, put writers became aggressive at 10,700. Call writers were writing in at 10,800. They will have to shed positions in trade today. As far as the stocks in the FNO ban is concerned, uh, Adani Enterprises, Adani Power and Devan Housing comes back into the FNO ban. Uh, Jet Airways goes out of the FNO ban. So it will be interesting to see how Jet reacts in trade today. As far as the PCR is concerned, the Nifty PCR moved from 1.74 to 1.81. The Bank Nifty PCR saw a little bit of cool off. It moved to 1.26. As far as the the stocks in focus are concerned. Again, these are the counters uh, which uh, uh, saw open interest decline. Again, United Breweries, Arvind, PVR, uh, all of them in focus. Uh, uh, and, and as far as, so again, Arvind uh, was up and uh, was uh, the demerged entity that traded today. United Breweries saw a drop that came in. You had PVR which saw a drop that, uh, which, which saw uh, PVR and KPIT saw a little bit of short covering that came in. So these are all the domestic cues. Let's go across to Paul Allen for all the top international headlines. The latest Japanese retail sales numbers offer some relief for the BOJ. Sales rose last month ahead of expectations, jumping 3.5% year-on-year against forecasts of 2.7%. The month-on-month -month figure smashed estimates, rising 1.2%, three times higher than was forecast. The BOJ is hoping higher spending will help boost inflation. The IMF says global growth may be slowing more than forecast just a month ago and is urging countries to pull back from a damaging trade war. The fund lowered its forecast in October and new data suggests things have weakened further. Christine Lagarde says financial conditions have tightened, especially in emerging markets. She adds that trade tensions continue to rise and significant risks are materialising. Tesla says owner drivers have racked up more than a billion miles using the car's autopilot system since the feature was first installed on October 2014. Autopilot is designed for use on highways and Tesla uses the collected data to improve the software. Elon Musk has promised to demonstrate fully autonomous driving on a cross-country road trip from Las Vegas to New York, although it's not clear when that might happen. 
Lion Air says reports that the plane that crashed into the Java Sea was not fit to fly are wrong. It says the Boeing 737 was airworthy and the airline has always upheld the culture of safety. A preliminary report into the crash says a faulty sensor wasn't checked or replaced before the fatal flight, even though pilots had warned of the danger. No one on board survived the crash on October the 29th. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts from more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. So when you have Fed officials start saying, well, you know, we want to be just above the neutral rate, and now they're saying, well, we're uncertain about the neutral rate, I think that's why it's catching so much attention, because ultimately, where the Fed believes the neutral rate is will have a lot to do with where they stop with their interest rate increases. And it seems to me this uncertainty now over where the neutral rate is, and there's a wide range of views on the FOMC, is really kind of at the heart of the Fed debate. And remember, last month, and it's true, it was kind of an off-the-cuff uh, remark to Judy Woodruff by Jay Powell, he said the Fed was still a long way to go from neutral, but this is what he said, probably in a little more measured, thoughtful way today. Interest rates are still low by historical standards, and they remain just below the range of estimates of that level that would be neutral for the economy, that is neither speeding up nor slowing down growth just below the neutral rate. And this is so interesting. This was a speech about financial stability because the Fed released its first semi-annual financial stability report today, the vast majority of his remarks. But he did start off putting this comment in about how, how the economy still looks good, inflation's still about where it needs to be, and then this just below neutral rate. Now, another thing that's important here is that Powell also echoed something that Rich Clarida said yesterday. He's the Fed vice chair in that job just two months, saying that the Fed's not on a preset course. To me, this t speaks to this sense, well, gee, if the Fed is looking for three rate hikes in 2019, this is a preset course. But the Fed doesn't view it that way because they're always assessing the data. Rich Clarida said they're not just assessing the data for to figure out, gee, what do we do with the next meeting? Meeting, they're assessing the data to know, again, where's the neutral rate, because it can change and get higher, it can get lower. Uh, I think it's interesting um, that Mike Feroli over at JP Morgan was writing about this, and he said, look, the range right now for the neutral rate is 25 to 3%. At the end of the year, the Fed, with one rate hike, will be up around 2.5%. Right. So if you're at that end of the range, you've hiked just about enough. If you think that the neutral rate's at 3.5%, you're in the camp, maybe it thinks there's a lot more to go. I think we're all learning a lot more about neutral rate than we ever intended to, but obviously it's a big focus for the Fed. In a major positive for India's largest IT company, TCS, uh, the, the U.S. jury in its verdict has cleared the company of any charges of anti-American buyers uh, favoring, uh, favoring Indian workers uh, uh, against uh, the American workers. Additionally, uh, the company has also acquired a stake in a U.S.-based consulting firm uh, Bridge, uh, Bridge, uh, Bridge Group uh, Capital. Uh, that apart, uh, we'll be watching out for Sika Logistics as well, wherein the company has received a big 363 crore orders from Mahan and man of the coal fields. Uh, that apart, we'll be also watching out for uh, something like a Cosmos film, wherein the company uh, has said that it has uh, decided to postpone the commissioning of its uh, BOPT uh, manufacturing line by about 8 to 10 quarters, uh, which is a big negative. So you could see some pressure coming in as far as Cosmos films is concerned. A positive news flow continues as far as Indoco Remedies is concerned, wherein the company has said that it has commissioned its new API manufacturing facility in Maharashtra. Now, with this expansion, uh, the company's existing capacity will go... Uh, up from 150 tons per annum to 600 tons, so that's almost a fourfold uh, increase in capacity. Uh, that apart, we'll be watching out for Vakrangi as well after the company received uh, the clean shed from market regulator SEBI in the case of uh, stock price manipulation. However, uh, the, uh, the market regulator has uh, identified disturbances with respect to promoter, rep uh, promoter reporting of, share of shareholding, and uh, they have warned the company uh, of this in the future as well. Uh, key bulletins to watch out for would be Shankara Building Products, where an Amansa Holdings has bought in close to a 1.3% stake in the company. The direction is still the same. Uh, you know, the, uh, the vaccines now released this time uh, have uh, generally level, uh, increased the level of the GDP at constant prices so that, you know, uh, you can see that there is an increase in the level of the activity. Uh, but, uh, but the growth rate uh, has tended to come down because you can't keep both, uh, you know, you can't have both, uh, you know, sort of growing at the same rate. Uh, so, so I think uh, 
the, the, the new data that has been now released has, uh, you know, has been uh, estimated by much superior methodology, has had a much larger data source, the data coverage is much better, and now it's much, in, much more in sync with the system of national accounts of UN 2008, and therefore makes our data far more globally comparable than what the earlier series was. So I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, we can go into the details of how all the data coverage that I've talked to you or methodology is much, much better, but uh, let me assure you that this has been vetted very seriously and very rigorously by some of the some of the country's best statistical minds and experts, uh, for which the Niti Aayog had arranged uh, two round tables, you know, on which this data was discussed, and we took the trouble uh, to make sure over a period of a month uh, that what you what 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 the uh, what's put out is is, is rigorously uh, as uh, as good and uh, and methodologically as robust as as is possible. Let me ask you about the methodology a little bit more, uh, Dr. Kumar. Uh, so you're saying this was vetted by a series of experts. Uh, firstly, you know, over what period of time, how many suggestions were taken on board on the methodology to be used before arriving on this one? And why was there such a difference in the methods used by the National Statistical Commission uh, and uh, the, this particular set of numbers where it's been put out by the CSO, although fronted by the Niti Aayog? The last question first, uh, one that both Niti Aayog and CSO are part of the same government, I hope, I, 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 you, you will accept. And that I told you that Niti Aayog uh, had arranged for, you know, all the expert, uh, uh, all the expert um, uh, consultations uh, and the vetting of the data. And three, that Niti Aayog is a technically competent, robust body. So the point that being made, very, I have heard it on the other channels, as to why Niti Aayog and not CSO, uh, you, you, Niti Aayog and CSO work very closely uh, in, in tandem with each other. At one point of time, you would remember, uh, MOSPI used to be, uh, you know, in some sense, organically connected to the uh, to the Niti Aayog or its predecessor. So that question is a bit, uh, you know, sort of. I, I doubt. I don't think that question is a really valid one. On the second one about how my, how far the consultations were done, the back series has taken more than two and a half years uh, to be prepared. There have been several, several iterations. Uh, the former chief statistician, uh, Dr. T. C. Anand, who started this process and was one of the people who had been overseeing it, was one of the people among the 10 who had also been consulted to vet its rigor and its methodology. And he would, he would vouch for the fact there had been a large number of suggestions that had been done both by national and international experts to make sure that this data, this series, is much more in sync with the globally accepted <coughs> norms that you've had. And third, the, the third th th thing that you said about the National Statistics Commission, uh, they, they made a much far more simplistic uh, uh, exercise, made some dramatic, drastic uh, assumptions and came up, and I, I give you a very specific thing, that for the year 11-12, which is the base year for the new series, and the end point of the earlier, what they did was to estimate the GDP level at the two, with the 2004-05 as base, and also with 2011-12 as base, saw that there was a three lakh crore difference between the two levels and distributed that level over the previous, you know, five, six, over the years until 2004-05 to, you know, on the assumption that growth rates don't generally change very much and they could therefore, you know, distribute it in some sense in equal measure over the previous years. Now this is, this is they, they've done it, you should ask them about how they did it, but what the CSO has done this time on this occasion is really to completely recalibrate economic activity in the country for the previous years by using, I mean, giving you one example, uh, you know, earlier there were people were using the ASI data, a very small segment of, you know, in the corporations or companies that you had, the new series uses 500,000 uh, company data released by the Ministry of Company Affairs. And I can go on and on on this, uh, and, and, and I'll tell you as to why uh, again, an example using sector-specific price indices yeah. rather than just an aggregate price indices, uh, you know, to be able to deflate the data. There are a large number of improvements that the new series have done over the previous one. 
the big brokerage calls for the day. First, we have is uh, Macquarie on Tata Steel. Now, the brokerage has maintained its outperform rating on the stock with a target price of close to 730 rupees on Tata Steel. Now, in an analyst meet, the company said that they are looking to grow only in the Indian market with an aim to reach close to 30 million tons per annum capacity by 2020. Now, it also said that the Kalinganagar Phase 2 expansion and Bhushan Steel would significantly improve the company's product mix, which would in turn improve the cost efficiencies and expand the margins of the company going forward. But the company in the analyst meet also said that they are not keen to match the higher bid of JSW Steel for Bhushan Power Asset, which means that there won't be any prize wars for that asset and the, and the company's ultimate focus still remains on deleveraging the balance sheet. Lastly, Tata Steel also confirmed that the corrections seen in the China steel prices have put domestic steel prices under pressure. However, the impact of the same on the company would be limited because of its contract sales with auto companies and because of its mix of value-added product uh, in, in its portfolio. Second, we have is HSBC on the oil marketing companies. Now, according to the brokerage, with the fall in oil prices, not only the margins of the oil marketing companies will normalize sooner, but the chances of policy risk have also lowered on these oil marketing companies. Now, the brokerage is also expecting the refining business of OMCs to remain the engine of growth in 2019 and 2020 because of the IMO 2020 regulations, which will be ex which are expected to kick in by Jan 1st of January 2020. Lastly, it says that the, despite this fall in crude prices, as investor confidence has been lower on oil marketing companies which should gradually improve in coming months that is expecting the ma government to manage oil prices through uh, changes in taxes and not through changes in the retail prices lastly the brokerage has raised the target price for all the three oil marketing companies and have maintained its buy rating for Indian Oil Corporation. It has increased the target price to 176 from 174 for BPCL. It has increased the target price to 392 from 360 and for HPCL it has hiked the target price to 300 from 260 rupees. It's called reciprocal. We have to have reciprocal trade. We can't have trade that's meant for uh, stupid people. What we witnessed this weekend is yet another reckless Russian escalation. Speaker, and with permission, I would like to make a statement on the conclusion of our negotiations. I can say to the House with absolute certainty that there is not a better deal available. And my fellow leaders...
All right, several stories that you should consider reading. In fact, all the live market action right here on Bloomberg went live over the course of the day. So do tune in. As of right now, you can find uh, just a couple of stories that you definitely should read. First up, debt laid in ILNFS will gauge investor interest for its renewable energy assets. The asset includes uh, an operational wind power generation plant under construction wind power plants, uh, asset management services for operational wind energy plants and a business for project development. And uh, after a Moody's downgrade, Yes Bank's uh, Credit ratings were downgraded by ICRA, citing similar corporate governance concerns. The rating of Yes Bank's 10,900 crore Basel III compliant bonds were cut to AA from AA+. ICRA had earlier highlighted that the recent developments will curtail the bank's ability to raise capital. That's all you need to know going into trade today. Up next is Indian Open, so do stay tuned. This is Bloomberg Quint.